So the Inventor Bill of Materials is really a collection of I properties and other information. So if I was to take this top plate component here and we go and take a look at its I properties, what I'll see is that it's lacking some information here. So there's no description. So we'll call this a tabletop. The part number is going to be a PL. And I'm going to click OK. And I'm going to edit that part. And let's change this to a steel material. So we're going to change this to stainless steel. So change material, change die properties. Now within the assembly, if I take a look at the bill materials, what we're going to see is that that information has populated within, we can see that that tabletop plate is set. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to remove the thumbnail just to tighten things up. And I'm going to use the column chooser and I'm going to pick, you know, some other properties to display in here. And what I want to see is I want to see the, the material. So we're going to drag and drop that. You know, maybe we don't want the stock number. So I'm starting to see the information. So I'm actually going to just leave it in this order, but we can see that that's the information that's been applied. Now we can see right now that the structure tab and the parts only tab are disabled. Now, since this is a flat assembly, I'm really just interested in the parts only view. So I'm going to enable that view and you can see how, you know, the model data tab lists everything. So regardless of, you know, the structure or anything like that, whereas the parts only tab, you know, will remove any sub assembly. So let's just set this up in the way we want to see it. So I want to have a description. I'm not really interested in the bomb structure from here. Uh, I don't need the part number or the rev. Um, this is, you know, kind of the information that I'm concerned about. Now I know that these other ones are made from HSS. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this to HSS and description is going to be two by two inch. Now, instead of having to go each part and copy and pasting this or repeating the work, I'm going to copy and paste this so I can use the build materials to, you know, kind of help me populate so I can copy paste. I can, you can see things that there's, you know, right click capitalize and there's find and replaces. But note that there's this unit quantity and there's this quantity and notice that you know, with the tabletop and this leg, notice that it's each and four, so there's four legs in this model, but notice that the short and brace are set to eight inches unit quantity and a total quantity of 16. So where did that come from? Well, let's go and let's take a look at this leg component. So I'm just gonna double click on it. And I'm gonna take the extrusion and I'm gonna set the extrusion here. I'm gonna set it and I'm gonna name this parameter. So I'm gonna call this length and I'm actually going to increase this a little bit. So what I want is I want this to be 14 inches and I'm going to name that parameter. Now I could leave it at the default D value, but it's going to make it a little bit easier for me to select. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the document settings. I'm going to go to the build materials tab and I'm going to change this from a base quantity of each and I'm going to pick that parameter. So I'm going to pick that parameter. I'm going to set the base unit in inches or I'm going to leave it in inches. So we can see the settings, we'll click OK. So returning back to the mill materials and looking at the model data tab, what we can see now is that, you know, it's, it's 14 inches as a unit quantity with a total quantity of 56 inches. So it's done what we want it to do. Now, this would work quite good for a, you know, kind of a, a cut list, right? So I can see that I've got, you know, it's 14 each for a total. Well, what else can I, can I show in here? So let's go back to the parts only view and let's add another column. And what we're going to add is we're going to add in the item quantity. So now what I'm going to see is that, you know, this quantity, it, the unit quantity doesn't, you know, perhaps it, it does help or it doesn't help. What it's showing me here is that I can mix and match and have different quantities, There's really three different quantities that Inventor will, will provide. So we can see the item quantity is always going to be the number of instances. So there's four legs in here. The unit quantity is what's the measurement for one. So, you know, with that plate, it's, it's a, it's an each, whereas the leg is 14 inches. And then we can see the total quantity or the quantity. So when I want this kind of cut list type view, 
then what I can do is I can use a combination of these quantities. Now, what if what I'm really looking for is the total material? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rename this and I'm going to call it HS and let's just call it one, two, three. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this part number and I'm going to update these other part numbers and notice how it starts merging together. And the reason why it's merging together is if I take a look at my settings, what I can see is that my, my row merge is turned on so that anything with the same part number automatically merges together. So now I can see that I've got eight total combined for a total quantity of 136 inches. Well, now the unit quantity varies between those three different types. So the unit quantity really doesn't apply anymore. So I'm going to, I'm going to remove that. So maybe I don't want the item quantity either because now what I'm looking for is, is I'm looking for, you know, my procurement team to go and purchase me some material so I can cut this. So by using the part number, we can, we can start merging that together. So again, the Inventor Bill of Materials is, is you know, a collection of properties, iProperty information. And the Model Data tab will always show you all the components you know, within your, your document. Then you can use the Structure and Parts Only to, to merge based on part number if that's what you want to see. Remember that we've got three different types of quantities, so we can see you know, what is one, um, what's the total in there? And we can mix and, mix and match. And finally, we can use this bill of materials to make changes. So maybe this material here, what I want is I actually wanted this to be steel. So I'm going to go and I'm just going to pick steel. And then I'm going to copy this. So I just did a control C and I'm just going to paste that in. So again, I'm able to go in and, and adjust these properties right from within the bill of materials. We'll click done. We can see that that's changed. If we go in and we, you know, modify one of these, these instances, what I can see is that steel has been set. And if I look at the eye properties, what I'm going to see is that that revision value has also been set. So it's kind of the, the basis for your bill materials and how you can, you know, start populating that information.